There's a lot of critics who want to remove Wayne LaPierre from leadership at the NRA, right? This is a common right. thing here. People don't like the allegations that he spent NRA money on, you know, fancy suits, uh, or uh, although I guess uh, Ackerman McQueen was sort of the pass through for a lot of these things, um, the former top contractor who they actually also just reached a settlement with, but we don't know the details of, right, uh, right. but you know, uh, luxury trips, um, uh, private jet flights, yacht trips, all this stuff that we've heard uh, about and that Wayne has actually admitted to some of this uh, in the form of uh, uh, the 2019 990s, he admitted to $400,000 worth of excess benefits being paid to him and that he, I guess, was meant to pay that back uh, as almost sort of a interest-free loan, I guess would be the best way to describe that situation but of, of the things that he's like admitted to, the rest of it is disputed. Of course, uh, they they claim you know that they didn't that he didn't do a lot of these things or they weren't there were reasons that justified them as business expenses. But uh, anyway, um, uh, if you wanted to remove him, the practical process is to have two thirds of the board vote to uh, kick him out. Right. Correct. And so in, in, in with the board as it stands now, the vast majority support uh, Wayne LaPierre. The vast majority voted for him to be executive vice president for another term at the last board meeting uh, in, in Charlotte, um, uh, where you actually were nominated to run against him for the first time in, I don't know, 30 years, right? That he's had a right. competitor. That's correct. But, right. but uh, most people voted for Wayne. And so if you wanted to get... You wanted to get him off the board, you'd have to probably remove two thirds of the board through this ballot process, which is controlled by the board, right? right as far as who gets to be on the ballot, and then would that would take at least two years of of voting people out because only a third of the board is up each year, um, right? So I, I, you know, just to give sort of an impression of how uh, how complex the internal workings actually are. Um, and then you you believe uh, that you weren't renominated because you oppose Wayne's leadership. Correct. Right? Yeah, yeah. That and that's a pretty common process. You can you can see other other um, board members that were also not renominated, like C Colonel Brown, for example. He's the editor of Soldier Fortune magazine. He was not renominated by the nominating committee and had been on the NRA board for decades. Um, because he was also outspoken about the, um, the, the management and, and some of the decisions that were made. So that's kind of a way they control the process. If you speak out, you're, you're either going to be tossed off committees if you were on a committee and you're not going to be renominated. And that's the way they control the process. And it's, it's very unfortunate for the membership that that's, that's the process. And, uh, uh so what, what is it you, you, you said you're happy with this ruling that there won't be dissolution. Right. Correct. What what do you want to see the outcome be in this New York case then? So I, I think, you know, hopefully they're going to be moving towards trial. I'm, I'm thinking uh, maybe later in the summer. But um, the, the, in order to restore the NRA it, to have integrity in the NRA for the membership, the wrongdoers have to be dealt with. And so I think the New York AG, that's what they're going to spend their time on. So any any of the management team or board members that were involved with, you know, misusing NRA monies or involved with contracts that may not be quite appropriate. All that has to be dealt with. And, and hopefully the New York AG will actually work on behalf of the membership now and, and reclaim those monies that were donations by members and reclaim that for the benefit of the NRA. And that, so really, I think the future of the NRA for the membership is really in the hands of the New York AG. Uh, whether we want it to be or not, that's where we are. So I'm hoping that the, the, the judge is, is a good judge, it appears to me, and that the outcome is favorable as far as removing anyone that's done some of these things that have been discussed with the, by the New York AG, and also it's in the filings. Um, all that should be dealt with by the, the courts. Interesting. And so you uh, you were on the board, right, for for yes. several months there. You're a vocal, uh, outspoken critic of of Wayne and, and other members of leadership. How many people on the board would you think would need to be removed for for that goal that you're talking about? 
Yeah. So unfortunately, there, the entire I got to know a lot of the board members and, and several would talk to me in private. Um, they would call me or email me, but they would not speak publicly. Uh, and so just by that interaction, when I was there, there was less than a dozen of board members that I would consider very upset with what has happened and also did not support what had happened. But it publicly in the board meetings, they would vote with the board. They would not speak out. Um, they wouldn't comment in a negative way, in which I was commenting a lot about some of the things that were going on. So there was less than less than, I'd say, 12 board members. And now with this new board, I think there's even fewer. There's only, I would think, five or six that that believe that management has made mistakes and need to be taken off the NRA. Um, so there's not many. The vast majority, I would say 80% of the board supports what the NRA has done, and they're not willing to make the changes necessary to correct the problems. And in your opinion, why, why do you think that is? Well, there's lots of reasons, actually. I think the, um, some people, there, there's, there's kind of the, um, the inner circle. We, the people that we talk about, we call it the cabal. There's the cabal group that are very close to Wayne, and they really control the process. Um, and they're the most outspoken um, supporters, and also they kind of control the board. So there's a, probably a third of the board are, is that cabal group that tightly control the, the outcome. Um, there's also a third of the group that um, they don't necessarily agree with what's happened, and they can see the problems they're just not willing to do anything about it because they know if you speak out, you're going to be removed from your committee and you're not going to be renominated. And so you, you'll no longer be able to serve on the NRA board. So I think, you know, that they're being suppressed to, to just be quiet. And then there's probably a third of these board members that really are not qualified to be on a board. They don't understand the complexity of some of these issues. They don't understand financial matters. They don't understand tax fraud. They don't understand all these things. And they just, they think that the New York AG is telling lies and that it's not true, uh, which all the data supports a lot of it is true, if not all of it. So that's how I see it. There's probably three different types of board members there. But the third, the, the cabal controls the board. The other two thirds go along with whatever that, that group is doing. Can you uh, talk a little bit more about what you mean by control the board? How how do they control the board? The, uh, you know, there's 76 members. How right. does one third of them control the rest? Well, so if you look at the, the committee assignments, the, the same people are the chairmen or the vice chair of all the important committees. So anything that has to do with the money or the power of the board or the legislative portion of the board if you look at that, it's all the same board members. They're generally officers in the board or they're former you know, officers of, of the board. So it's, it's a small group and um, they control the meetings. So I've tried to, in some board meetings, I tried to bring a resolution, for example, to expand um, the uh, special litigation committee, which seems to be a reasonable you know, uh, request because there's only two people on that committee. Um, and they were making decisions for the entire board. Well, that was shot down by the entire board um, because they didn't want to do that. They don't want the board involved. They want it just to be controlled by a very select few members that are highly supportive of Wayne and also the history of the NRA. So that's, that's how they control. They control all the board meetings. They control the agenda. And it's very difficult to, to deviate from the, the agenda that's been presented um, because that's the process that, they, that they're managing. 